Hi, I'm Paul Walsh, the CEO of Metacert. This is a video to talk about the differences between an SMS firewall and a security service that's designed for anti-phishing to protect subscribers from SMS scams that lead to flubot malware or online fraud and identity theft. But before I go into the differences, I need to explain what SMS firewalls were created for. So mobile operators generate many billions of dollars in revenue from SMS traffic alone every year. So the more messages that are sent out by brands and banks, the more money operators make. So they have to protect that revenue. Now let's talk about how SMS traffic actually works. Typically speaking, a major brand or a bank will use a web service that sits on top of something like Twilio or Cinch, or they will build it internally using Twilio or Cinch to build a web-based app that makes it easy to broadcast messages automatically to large numbers of people or to automate the process of sending text alerts to individuals who are waiting for parcel deliveries or food deliveries. However, there's a second way, and that's where companies buy SIM cards and then create banks of SIMs, all of which have unlimited data tariffs. And they then promote the ability for SMEs and brands to send messages on the cheap, sometimes even free, using their web service. That's not a good thing for operators because it means all of that traffic bypasses their pocket. They don't generate any revenue whatsoever from the billions of messages that are being sent for free because those services shouldn't really exist because they break the terms of service from the operators in regards to the SIM cards. You're not supposed to use a normal SIM card to broadcast millions of messages to people over the internet. So you're breaking the terms of service in the same way that if I was to share my Wi-Fi connection with all of my neighbors and we downloaded terabytes of data, that would break the terms of service for my ISP. So as you can imagine, it's very important for operators to protect that revenue and to stop brands and banks or anybody else for that matter from using a non-official way to broadcast SMS messages. And they do that by employing an SMS firewall. So the firewall is designed specifically to determine how messages are being sent and what they contain to make sure that they're not being broadcast for free. And it's not just legitimate messages that they're looking for that are being sent for free. It's also spam messages that are being sent out by snake oil people the same types of messages that we expect to see in our spam folder in email. They're also designed to, to do the same thing. But in the email world, we don't expect those anti-spam filters to detect phishing messages. That's why we have an entire category within the cybersecurity world dedicated for email. Even though the anti-filter and even though the anti-spam filtering solutions are also provided by the same email providers, Microsoft and Google which just happen to be some of the biggest security vendors in the world, who also just happen to be some of the biggest threat intelligence companies in the world that other security companies rely on for URL classification. Metacert is one of those. We're a security vendor with products and services, but we're also a threat intelligence type company. And that's a small subset of companies within the whole landscape of cybersecurity. So we're the true experts. We specialize in URL classification. We're the ones that security products and services rely on to keep people safe from dangerous URLs. So going back to SMS firewalls and security, SMS firewalls are similar to the anti-spam filters that email providers have, but cybersecurity vendors have nothing for SMS. Not a single cybersecurity vendor in the world, excluding Metacert, of course, is offering a solution to any operator right now. Nobody. The only type of vendor that's offering a solution is the SMS firewall vendor because they don't know what they don't know when it comes to URL classification and phishing and social engineering. They don't realize that their assertions about using AI to detect danger inside a URL in less than half a second 
as it passes through a network, they don't realize why that doesn't make sense. AI relies on machine learning to be intelligent and machine learning can't exist without a big enough data set that's actually uh, remote, that's, that's related to the subject matter. SMS firewall vendors don't have those data sets. There's no data unless it comes from a threat intelligence company like Metacert or Google or Microsoft. But even if they did license that data of dangerous URLs, it wouldn't work. Metacert's traditional anti-phishing security service that we pioneered for de mobile device OEMs, mobile apps, team collaboration, and messaging services wouldn't actually stop SMS-based phishing attacks in the same way that it doesn't stop it for anybody anywhere until there's at least one victim who then reports the problem. And then people can start to investigate and classify URLs as dangerous. That's why Metacert flipped the model. So we're, we do the complete opposite to every other security company in the world. After relying on traditional anti-phishing security for years, we came to the conclusion that actually it added value, but it didn't actually stop phishing attacks, generally speaking, because it's impossible for any company in the world to stop a URL that we don't know about. I am one of the two people that co-instigated the internet standard for URL classification at the W3C in 2004, the standards body for the World Wide Web that creates standards like HTML, the Mobile Web Initiative, and the Semantic Web. And that was in 2004. So I've been studying the structure of URLs, UI, the human behavior of criminals, the human behavior of victims, and the intersection where they all meet for many years. And we, I have come to the conclusion that internet security is flawed by design. It's impossible to get right. We cannot stop dangerous URLs. That's why 2020 is the worst year in history for phishing, despite the fact that phishing was first discovered on the AOL network in 1995. It's not sophisticated and it's not new. An SMS message that contains a deceptive URL is no different to the same problem that we discovered on the AOL network in 1995. A link that goes to a website that is a counterfeit of something else that you trust and then you're enticed to do something that you would rather not do. We need to try something different and that's why I believe we need a zero trust strategy for SMS security where we assume every URL on the entire internet is dangerous unless verified. So we need to verify tens of billions of URLs in advance so that when a link goes through a network and it's checked by security, it needs to check to make sure that it's authenticated. And if it doesn't authenticate, then rewrite the URL so that the end user, the subscriber, gets the message with a link, but the link has been rewritten and it goes to a caution page to say, this has not been authenticated, do not proceed. If you do accept the risk and you proceed, then click here. So I believe the approach that we need to take is zero trust security, which is a very kind of futuristic approach, really. So I don't expect SMS firewall vendors to understand that approach, let alone agree that that is a viable approach to solve this problem. Because again, the firewall vendors don't know what they don't know when it comes to phishing in particular. So the telco industry, I urge you to turn to the cybersecurity world, even if it's not MetaCert, turn to Microsoft or Google or Proofpoint and ask them, what solution do you have for mobile operators to stop SMS phishing attacks? And then let's wait for the silence because nobody has built anything yet. The reason there are no security vendors in the SMS world is because the market is not big enough. And the market is not big enough because mobile operators are not actually investing in a security solution for SMS yet because 
nothing has been available. So it's like a chicken and an egg situation. There's no way operators could possibly have known that this was going to be a problem. So they can only turn to SMS firewall vendors. The big vendors, however, from the security world will enter the market after they build a new solution. And that will happen when they see that the market opportunity is big enough for them to invest in a product or service. Because to build a solution for SMS, it's going to take time, energy, and money. So we will see new vendors come into the space, hopefully in 2022. Maybe the end of this year, if we're very lucky, but very, very unlikely. When Metacert pioneered the very, very first security service specifically for URL-based threats for smartphones, it took a couple of years before the second vendor built something similar. When Metacert pioneered the very first security service for mobile apps with a web view, it took at least two years for the second vendor to enter the market. And about three or four years before I started to see security researchers citing my blog posts inside their presentations without attribution at cybersecurity conferences. If anybody wants me to prove that, I'll do it in private with a few hyperlinks, but I wouldn't want to embarrass anybody in public. When Metacert pioneered the very first security service for HipChat and then Slack, it took another couple of years for the second and third vendors to enter the market. Gardner didn't even care when I spoke to the analysts in person. They didn't think Slack or team collaboration generally would even be a security threat. Now they have a magic quadrant with their four favorite vendors in the top right hand corner because their vendors have finally built something for Slack. Now I'm seeing the same with SMS. This is deja vu. There's nothing new happening here. Criminals are identifying where most people are going to be so that they can actually trick them into doing something they would rather not do. There's nothing scientific, there's nothing sophisticated, there's nothing new happening. So when Flubot hits another country, the country shouldn't say it's new and sophisticated. It's not. SMS phishing is not new or sophisticated. What happens on the other end of the URL after you infect your device with malware, that is new and sophisticated. And that will continue to be new and sophisticated. So all the anti-malware and antivirus software companies out there are going to need to do a lot of work ongoing for the rest of their career because nobody is stopping the URL that people use to get to the app or download or website where the criminal's desired outcome has just taken place. So we need to focus on the front door. It's one thing to offer window locks and door locks, guard dogs, safes, motion centers, light sensors, and everything else for the house. But if every single burglar is knocking on the door and homeowners are allowing them in, then yes, we may still want to invest in other security products and services, but we may want to actually address that one and make sure we invest heavily in that, stop people from coming in the front door. And it's not about investing in another door lock or a deadbolt or a spy hole or adding artificial intelligence and machine learning to those things. We need to make it easy for the people opening the door to identify a criminal immediately rather than trying to fix everything else that's not important. In the cybersecurity world, that's what we're seeing. There are thousands and thousands of vendors selling many, many tens of thousands of products and services, but 90% of the world's cyber attacks involve phishing. They don't all involve deceptive URLs. Some involve messages that misdirect people. Some contain attachments, but URLs is the vast majority of the problem that we see today. And we need to stop assuming every URL is safe until it's flagged, investigated, confirmed, and classified as dangerous. It doesn't matter if that takes five minutes or five hours or five days. For SMS, we need to be able to make that determination in less than a second because the message takes less than three seconds to go from the sender 
to all the recipients. By the time it hits the recipient's handset, it's too late. There's no point in even investigating that URL unless you want to block it for future campaigns. But criminals don't reuse those URLs mostly. They'll just copy and paste in a new URL in the same message and click resend and broadcast again. Why would they reuse the same URL for Flubot after they've spent the guts of probably a year creating the Flubot malware and everything else related to it? And also they don't make spelling mistakes in phishing messages. They know that SMS firewalls have got some AI to help detect some kind of anomaly, anomaly <laughs> inside the message. So if a firewall can detect words such as you have missed a voicemail, click on this link. Criminals know they just have to insert one character and the machine learning isn't actually that smart and can't detect that and so therefore lets it through and everybody else thinks it's a spelling mistake and therefore people should look out for spelling mistakes inside messages to identify phishing. <laughs> so we need to get it right. We need to create a category for SMS and we need to put in that category cybersecurity vendors that know what they're doing in the context of SMS phishing. If SMS firewall vendors want to build a security service, brilliant. Just hire the right kind of people, build the right kind of tools, and then put the product inside the category. Thank you. I'm Paul Walsh from Metacert.